Hi, Brian James at Micro Four Thirds Guy once again, and in this episode, I'm bringing you a working review of the Sigma 60mm f2.8 lens for Micro Four Thirds. Hi, Brian James at Micro Four Thirds Guy again, bringing you this time uh, a review of the 60mm Sigma f2.8, f beg your pardon, f2.8 prime lens for Micro Four Thirds cameras. This is the DN range of lenses. Now this continued, but it's one I've been asked for a couple of times because it's one I use quite often in headshots. I've never used it outside particularly, so I decided I was going to do uh, a live review outside with this lens and see just how useful a 60mm lens on Micro Four Thirds is for outdoor shooting. Let's have a look at it. Don't forget, if you uh, are looking at this channel for the first time, please give me a thumbs up if you like the video. That helps the algorithms on YouTube spread it to more people. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below in whichever side it's on. You can never remember which side. And if you hit the bell button, that will give you updates whenever I send a, put out a new video. The other thing is as well, uh, none of my equipment is sponsored on this. Everything I've got, I've bought. Um, so if you would like to try and help me keep this channel going with a small donation for a cup of coffee or something, you'll find there's a PayPal link below. And all the people who have given me um, a donation up to now for a cup of coffee, thank you very much. It's really been appreciated. Um, so the lens, let's have a look at the lens. It's, uh, it's a great little lens, actually. It cost £119 UK when I bought it. Um, which, you know, it really is dirt cheap. That's cheaper than the 25mm um, Panasonic 1.7 lens. Um, interesting little lens. I've got it mounted on the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark I here. Comes with um, uh, a lens cap on, which comes standard in it. Comes with a, a soft pouch as well, a soft bag um, with the lens. Unusual design, very, very smooth design around the side here. Um, a focus ring. The focus ring is something of a, of a pain to tell you the truth. It's not the smoothest of focus rings and very, very difficult to grip. So if you want it for predominantly manual focus, I'm, I would maybe suggest that it's not the ideal choice. Uh, mounted on the camera, as I say, 60mm. Um, doesn't extend any further. That's as far as it goes. So it is quite a small, compact lens on this. Really, really useful. Um, metal mount. Metal body, a predominantly metal body with a bit of plastic on it. Um, unusual, it has a white dot to align it up, which is a bit strange when you, when every other lens you've got is red. It tends to throw you a little bit. But overall, great little lens, absolutely superb. Now, I've used this quite a lot on headshots when I really want to do a tight headshot. If I want to do something for LinkedIn or, or Instagram for somebody. Um, I tend to, for most of my portrait work, I do tend to use the 45mm Olympus f1.8 lens. I find that fabulous and even smaller than that. But with this, I find this really, really useful. The f2.8 isn't a problem for me because having that such a long focal length, equivalent on a 35mm or a full frame camera to a 120mm insofar as its angle of field, the, the f2.8 I find is perfectly useful because with that long lens you can get really quite a good separation anyway. You don't have to go to silly f-stops to be able to get a, a decent out of, out of focus background. But this was something a little bit different. I decided I was going, going to do um, a, an outdoor review of this. And as I say, it's an unusual lens, this. I'm, most outdoor shooting I tend to be doing on the 17 or the 25mm lens. But going out with a 16mm lens in the middle of town is an unusual size. It's, it's quite a, a long lens. And we'll, we'll have a look at some of the shots. What I did find um, was it was great if you want to try and do... Um, shots where you're taking abstracts of something. You want to pull something out in an abstract sort of format from the main shot. And I found that very, very good. So let's have a little look. I just took a quick wander around Carlisle. These reviews, by the way, if I do reviews, I don't do all the high tech, techy sort of stuff where you go into it with, with grids and all sorts of things. I look at what I can see um, because as a photographer, that's what I'm actually selling is what people can see, not what's perceived or what's down in a lab report. So I tend to use, I tend to do uh, reviews on equipment for, for both for camera and also for what I buy insofar as what I consider to be a useful lens. So let's have a look at this. First stop on this was Carlisle Airport and we had a look at the, the Vulcan Bomber XJ823. Now it's worth saying that on this I was probably um, 
a good couple of hundred meters away from this aircraft and even then I found it difficult to get it all in frame I've chopped the wing off on one side I was a good couple of hundred meters away on the road um, just to be able to get this in it is a big aircraft obviously but at the same time with that 60 millimeter um, focal length or 120 equivalent you really are very very zoomed in it's a it's a, a mid range zoom lens but it's on the high side of the mid range before you get into the real long zooms what I did find is the details fantastic on this. That the colour rendition, I tried it on both the Olympus OMD EM1 and the um, Lumix GX8 and also the, GX, uh, also the G9. And what I found was on all of them, I got very, very similar results. The, um, the Lumix did tend to be a little bit more, um, a little bit more intense, a little bit more saturated on the colours. But overall, I found the, the, both uh, the Olympus and the Lumix to be fairly neutral on this with this lens. Um, this was taken on the Olympus. Most of my taken on the Olympus, unless I say otherwise. But equally, I could have done this review on either of the Lumix cameras, and it would have came out pretty much uh, the same on this. So I don't didn't really differentiate. And also, um, because this is a Sigma lens, you have no in-camera um, alterations for it. So normally, if you put a um, a Lumix lens onto a Lumix camera, it will do certain um, optical changes on the camera, on the lens, because it knows about that lens and the software. Uh, because this is a third party Sigma, you basically, what you get, what you see is what you get. Um, that did worry me a little bit at first because you don't have the lens correction, but in actual fact, I've never noticed a problem on it. Um, on this, I don't get any chromatic aberration at all, and I've really got very little in the way of uh, any distortions either. So it's really, it's really matched well. So looking at this, we've got two shots of the aircraft here, as you can see, and you'll find that what I did find is almost entirely over the whole view. I've got a really good sharpness. Now, I didn't do this fully open at 2.8. Something like this I usually wouldn't. This was shot at f4. Um, the reason I don't shoot wide open on this is because I do actually want something of a depth of field. Um, but what I have done is, in the past when I have been shooting portraits at 2.8, I found that there is a very, very slight softening towards the corners, but almost imperceptible. So, in reality, I would say for normal use, you've got sharpness right from the centre to the outside. But certainly at f4, it's, it's um, equal sharpness all over the whole, um, the whole display. So these were both taken at Solway Aviation Museum, uh, from the road overlooking it, say from a couple of hundred metres away. I then went towards Carlisle, took this, uh, again this is from the far side of the road to get, to get a gateway, um, and again this is where the 60mm comes in as a very tight lens, and you're going to hear me saying this all the way through this review. The, the tightness of the lens in a, a town situation I found very, very limiting. But again, very, very rich in the colours. Um, the only thing I've done on this is adjust on Lightroom the, um, the, the white balance basically and the um, exposure slightly. So I've added no more intensity, I've had no um, sharpening, I've done nothing in the way of um, any saturation changes. It's literally at the camera. The only difference is a little bit of um, balancing out the whites, um, the shadows, and the white balance and the exposure. The majority of the photographs you're going to get when, you do, when you're using this are going to be very abstract. This is quite a big building, but I was at the far side of the street on this one. And again, with the 60mm, this is what I was getting looking up. And what you do find with the 60mm, you, you do tend to be looking up an awful lot, because what's in front of you, you're getting half windows or whatever, so able to get anything of interest, you, you do tend to be looking above the, the pavement level on street use. And even on this, fairly big building, uh, the clock tower is there, but even then, trying to get something which was useful from this was very difficult because of that very, very tight, very zoomed in focal length of 60 millimeter. The detail, again, on things like the brickwork and the windows, the window frames, and on the clock face is superb. And some of the shots I'm going to show you in a few moments, I've got um, quite a zoom on them as well, and we'll be able to look at some of the detail we can get. Again, this is halfway across the street, uh, hotel, but again, just trying to see something of this. We're talking about mainly windows. We've got the flag beautifully in there, but nothing really else. So it really is good for abstract, but if you want an overall buildings and things, forget it. It's not a street view lens in that respect. Uh, very, very good even um, texture across the whole image there. We are tending to get, um, there's no real distortion 
on the bricks, which you wouldn't expect with a, a medium telephoto lens. Uh, you're well away from the normal distortion sort of lines. But great attention to detail, all the little bits of wire work um, are easy to be seen on there. The, the, the guy ropes for the flag, etc. Even the texture on the flag itself. Um, one of the problems with being on YouTube, of course, is you've got compression, so you can't see all the detail that I've got on these original shots. But even the, uh, the mildew on the flagpole really does stand out. And again, another abstract shot of the same building. Just trying to get something beyond that abstract, though, is difficult. And again, looking at the ground level, I wasn't even getting a full window in because it was so close. This again is right away across the town. This is the, uh, the, the tourist information in the old town hall. And uh, again, the looking at the detail. If you look into the corners as well as the center, there's a huge amount of detail in there and it tends to be equally sharp all over. Again, this was shot at F4. Um, let's just have a little look on this. This was quite a fast speed, I think. So F4 at a 200th of a second, um, ISO 200. And this was again shot on the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark I, so 16 megapixel camera. Moving in front of the town hall, we've got the, the post box. And again, the red of the post box and the, the, the brownish red of the brick color really comes out on this. There's a lovely contrast in this lens. Um, and again, for the price, £119 UK. Um, it wasn't an offer on that, but it was a general offer across the range. Um, and these can be picked up. There was a few of them. There was a 19mm, a 38mm, I believe, and also the 60mm. And this lens was produced not only for the Micro Four Thirds, but also was available in a Sony mount as well. So it could be used on APS-C lenses as well as the Micro Four Thirds. And that creates some interesting um, focal lengths when you go to Micro Four Thirds. They were, these were pretty much set up for an APS-C camera to be really useful. But as I say, the 60mm gives a really good tight portrait shot if you're taking headshots on it. Um, again, the detail on this particular shot is superb. Um, the evenness, the lack of distortion, the lack of pincushion distortion on this or barrel distortion, it's totally devoid of any of that. And as, remember, as I say, there's no lens correction done in the camera on this. And Lightroom doesn't do lens correction on this because it sees it as a micro four thirds and doesn't do uh, lens correction. So this is literally as the lens sees it. Very, very good, very even. I love the color saturation, I love the contrast. It just works really well. Standing back again, probably about um, 100 meters away, to be able to get anything to be useful shot under this. Um, but again, when you see a, a bigger vista on there, the, the lack of distortion really does give a, a, a pleasing view on this. Now, as I say, this is the, the DN range. It was available on both APS-C and Micro Four Thirds. Um, but the, the useful thing for this is, whether you've got an APS-C camera or a Micro Four Thirds, it's a very, very small, neat lens. The big problem is when you first pick it up, it rattles. And I don't know if I can actually show you on this. I'll just take you off this view, bring you back to the camera. When it's off the camera, you may be able to hear the rattling and that's the focus mechanism it's a floating focus mechanism it's a little bit disconcerting at first the beauty is when you switch it on and put power onto it on the camera it does rattle if i switch power on though it clicks and it holds it steady it's held the focus mechanism is held by having power on don't worry about it if you do buy one of these lenses especially if you buy one probably second hand on on one of the sites don't send it back if it rattles it's meant to Looking back at the photos again, uh, this was a shot, this was really um, getting under dusk um, and I've actually had to push the exposure quite a bit in Lightroom to get this out because it was so dark um, and I allowed it to, to be quite a dark shot. Uh, it was an overcast sky but by boosting up a little bit with the exposure, again there's been no extra, extra um, saturation put into the shot at all. This is literally straight out of the camera and the only thing I've done is just pushed up the um, exposure and lifted the shadows slightly and you can see the colors coming out of those neon signs on the garage really stand out a fantastic nicely balanced and again the detail is in, in the road signs even though it's it's dark and um, dingy this was this was quite dark uh, to see so it was really something of a, of a, of a late evening early night shot 
coming into Carlisle, this is the Citadel station, which is the main railway station in Carlisle. And again, on this, I'm probably a couple of hundred metres away from the station itself. And all I was really wanting to do on this was to show you the difference on the zoom. Um, what you've got, because this is the Citadel station here. We have something of a view of the clock tower again, lots of detail and again, good contrast. But if we compare this 60 millimeter to a 17 mil, taken at exactly the same place, there's your difference. So on a 17 mil lens, you've got the whole of the station in, you've got lots of foreground. Whereas if I take it, again, take it back, if you see the clock tower up in the, up in the left hand side, zoom in on the clock tower on the 60 mil lens, and that's from exactly the same place. I didn't move my physical position on the pavement at all. So it really is a very, very tight lens and quite difficult in a street in a street in a street scene to be able to um, make it usable. This is part of the um, the citadel, the wall, the um, the main part of Carlisle, and again, this is taken on the 17 millimeter lens to give you an idea as to what it's like normally. Put the 60 on from the same place. And we're well zoomed in, but again, lots of attention and detail. The flowers are nicely detailed on that. The texture of the bricks comes out well, the stonework. And again, no distortion. The, the straight lines are straight. Um, lots of detail in the corners as well as the centre. And again, this was taken, I think, on either F4 or F3.2. Let's just have a little look and see if we can find out. This was on F3.2. So again, quite a tight um, focal length. Um, quite, uh, so again, quite a tight aperture on this, but moving towards is fully open, but still all the details there. Looking at the other side of the, of the, uh, the wall tower, and again on the 17 millimeter lens, and switching over to the 60 mil, and you can see we, we've basically got the ability to get a window into there compared to the full, full building which we've seen previously. Again, the stonework comes out, the detail comes out, the contrast and the textures and all the different shades of colours come out very, very well on those bricks. I can't fault the lens, as I say, for £119, £120 UK. Um, and basically, if you're watching this in the States, it, it's, it's near enough a one for one dollar swap. So if we're paying £119, you'll be paying around about $120 for an equivalent product in the States by the time you're taking the different taxes and things. So really good value for money and the, the quality just cannot knock. This is part of the old town hall in Carla, which we saw earlier on in, uh, behind the post box. This is looking up at roof level. And what I wanted to do on this is to have a look and see what happens when you really go in and pixel, pixel peep on this. Um, so we've taken, taken a photo there, but if we zoom in to 200%, we can see that we've got loads of detail on that. We can actually see around the screws. Um, there's a huge amount of detail on that, how they're put on. It's nice and clean, nice and sharp. There is a little bit of graininess on that as you get zoomed into 200%, but that's totally acceptable, I would say, especially on a, um, a 16 megapixel um, sensor. Looking at this is towards the, uh, the Citadel station again at the left-hand tower. And we can see there's the, the drinking fountain there. And again, if we just zoom in on that, that's at 60 mil. If we zoom in to 200% on this and look at the, 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 the carving, the name carving on that, the text, and also the detail on the stone, for 200% zoom in, this is superb. It really is um, very, very useful. And the, 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 the extreme detail really comes out on this. Now being a 60mm lens or 120 equivalent on a full frame, you're very much in the, the upper part of the mid um, telephoto section. And the thing with telephoto lenses, you're going to get a lot of compression. So looking down the main street in Carlisle, uh, looking down English Street, it's very, very difficult to get any sort of perspective. So if you are taking anything on a long lens like this, expect compression. You've got very little idea as to how far away the distant objects are. Take this on something of a, a, um, a more medium lens, something like a 25mm, which is a 50mm full frame equivalent. Um, the standard kit lens, if you like, the Nifty 50. You're going to be able to get quite a, an idea as to how the, the street's put together. But on this one, you've got real compression in there. It's difficult to tell any sort of real distance relative to each other. And even when you're getting closer in with the seats, you don't get much of a change in the perspective. And that's a characteristic of using um, a, a telephoto, especially 
um, a high medium to low full telephoto lens you're going to lose that um, that depth perception you get a lot of compression on that again though the detail is all in there so although we've got we've got very little in the way of depth perception on that we've got a huge amount of detail and again the contrast and colors are just absolutely fantastic so let's leave the the photos at that and come to my conclusion so what do i think about this well the f2.8 sigma dn 60 millimeter lens for micro four thirds um, I'm really impressed with it for a value for money it's got to be a 10 out of 10 because to get a, a, any sort of prime lens for 120 pounds brand new is ridiculously it's unheard of to get something where it's predominantly metal build as well um, and solid it really feels solid in the hand I, I can't fault that the drawback for me as I say the focus ring the smooth there's, there's no grip on it and when you do use it in, in manual focus, it has a graunchy and gritty sort of feel to it. Very, very difficult to, to use, I found. So that's a drawback if you're going to be using manual focus on it. For the accessories which come with it, a really good little case. The lens hood comes with it. If only Olympus would do that on some of their lenses. And the ones which aren't the pro lenses don't come with... Um, with lens hoods. Lens hoods are superb, they really are useful things. So for it to be coming in with a good quality lens hood in a good quality um, case with it, you just can't knock that at all. You could be spending 20 or 30 pounds on a, a carry case for the for the lens to go with it. Comes with the, with the camera. Um, as I say, if you're using the Sony, APS-C type Sony, you can have a great useful little lens on this. But as I say, on micro four thirds, it doesn't make some unusual focal lengths, but very, very usable ones. Um, this is midway between my two favourite lenses. My two favourite portrait lenses tend to be the 45mm f1.8 Olympus and the 75mm f1.8 Olympus. Would I swap it for either, this one for either of those? No, they tend to be the focal lens alike. But what I do like about this is it's not a million miles away from the quality of the 75mm Olympus. It really is sharp. The 75mm, I don't think there's anything on the market which beats it. But you do pay a premium for that. It's not a cheap lens. Whereas I say for £120 for this, this will give you professional quality, very, very usable, sharp, undistorted shots every day of the week. And for a close-up portrait lens, for a heads-only shot, it's absolutely superb. It keeps you it's a good focal length because you are just close enough to be able to do the tight head shots without being too far away to lose that personal touch in the sort of shoot that i've been doing in this video though not really my style i found it very very difficult to use on street on the streets just purely because of the focal length itself um, i do find using something akin to the 17 mil or the 25 mil an awful lot more useful for uh, for street use so i find this is far too tight for most circumstances if you're going to be doing something though um for vehicle movements if you're going to be doing something of motor racing i think this is a great lens for motor racing if you're close to the track um it's manageable whereas some of the long telephoto lenses that you've got become rather ungainly this is nice and manageable it's got enough um detail in what you've got to be able to really zoom in if you want to do digital zooming afterwards so you can crop well in as in the post production results and know that you're going to get a good quality image on it so my recommendation if you can find one of these the 60 mil dn sigma f 2.8 um, lens buy it it's well worth it so once again this is brian james at micro four thirds guy signing off and if you've enjoyed this video give me a big thumbs up it makes it makes youtube's algorithms uh, spread this to more people so that they can see the video if you've enjoyed it as well please hit the subscribe button um, i'm up at i'm doing this over 800 subscribers and every one of you i really do appreciate so thank you now I don't, no, I'm not sponsored for this video, I'm not even monetized on this video, so everything I, I have on here I bought myself. So if you can help me by buying me a cup of coffee, you'll find there's a PayPal link below, really would appreciate that. Till the next time, this is Brian James signing off, saying thanks very much for watching, enjoy your photography, bye bye. <music>